Hello, today I have Keysize HD3 with me and I'll be running a quick demo. First, let me show you how easy it is to navigate the new user interface. So let's start with the default setup, which resets everything on the scope. And basically let's add a couple of sources in here. So if we press on a couple of analog channels, and then we can turn on the digital channels, which turn the 16 digital IO um, we have. And we can also add a couple of math functions in here. Let's do FFT, FFT max. And basically what we can do is customize the waveform layout. So we can press on custom layout and click on custom layout again. So what you can see in here, they all arranged in vertical and um, if if we move this around you can see in the background it can be a bit packed but what can happen in here is that we can change this to horizontal layout and with this horizontal layout you can customize you know the screen into four grids or split it into four grids basically and uh, move all these sources around so let's say i want to show the math function or like the FFT in grid three and then move the FFT max to grid three as well. Let's move this one in here to grid two. And if we close this and look at the signal in the background, you can see now we like split the screen into four different grids. So showing signals in a nicer and better way. One thing we can do in here as well, uh, which is to do with like how we display the signal, if you go to setup and click on display, and basically you can select full screen, which is a nice feature to have basically using the whole grid and using the whole display of the screen to, you know, show the signals. So it's, a, it's quite a cool um, option to have. So in here, we can click on this list to display the favorites we have. So you can edit this list by clicking on edit favorite and choosing the option that we would like to have or like we use most of the time. So if we go to the main menu and go to setup and click on acquire, basically we can have lots of different options for bandwidth filters. Previously, there was only 20 megahertz filter, but now we have more than one option in here. So if we get back to the main menu in here and we click on measure and then we click on digital voltmeter and you can see an option here for like help and it gives you more details about how certain functions work on this scope so if you're stuck on like one of these things and you're not sure how it works basically it can refer to the cell function so what i'm going to do now is demonstrate the uncompromised waveform update rate so first of all if you go to the main menu click on help and then press demo then we can use the built-in demonstration signal in the scope so what I need now is to attach the probe that comes with the scope to channel one as shown on the screen. And then the other side would go to the probe compensation. So now I can select demo, go to quick demo, update rate, click on start. So what you can see on the screen now is basically Keysight's waveform update rate of 1 million waveforms per second. And you can see in the background, there's an infrequent glitch happening, which the key side scope is capable of capturing this. So if we press on next step, you can see that this is reduced down to 100,000 waveforms per second. You can still see the glitch happening in the background, but it's much slower compared to the 1 million waveforms per second. So what we can do now is a demonstration on the zone trigger. So um, what you can see in here is a more complex signal on the screen, which clearly some cross talk and I want to isolate different parts of the signal to characterize it. If we press on next step, you can see a box being drawn on the part that we're interested in and we're putting a must intersect. 
So in here we can do that by you know, drawing this box on the screen like that and selecting this must intersect and you know we can just isolate the signal like that. So if we press on next demo in here we can move to the hardware based protocol decoding and as you can see on in here this is like a, a CAN signal which is going to be of interest to people from in the automotive industry. Uh, basically you can support it, our oscilloscope supports symbolic decoding, meaning that we can translate the packets from bits to English. You can see in here different sections of the signal, like for steering, other ones for like engine, engine data, uh, airbag and so on, and you can have all the data in here. So if we press on next demo, we can demonstrate the capability of Fault Hunter. And while this running in the background, let me talk to you about the industry's only automated application that can scan your signal and find errors for you. So just trigger on your signal, set your parameters, auto setup option and run. It can run for just a few minutes or a couple of days actually. So what you can feel confident that you will catch any glitch or an infrequent event interfering with your signals. So as you can see, like it's showing like past in here and some, some other tests are running in the background. Let's wait for it to finish. You can see in here, it's showing some failed tests. And if we move this screen a bit, this is the signal. You can see how complicated it is. And basically it's triggering on different ones. But let's say I'm interested to look at the one that's only failed. So the slow rising edge one, if I do copy to trigger, click on that and then move this back again, you can see it isolates that signal. Now I can do analysis on that signal and basically, you know, I'm just trying to understand why is it failing in that case. So now let's clear this one and go to demonstrate the hardware based mask testing. So if we exit this and go to advanced features in here and then look for pulse shaped mask test. If we click on that and then click on start. So basically in just a few seconds, the mask test has performed million of tests and this is again due to the fact that we performed this in hardware in order to maintain that fast 1 million waveforms per second or higher. Other competitors perform this in software and run thousands of tests per second. As, you, as it keeps on running, you can see that this red bit is like, you know, going beyond the limits that we set it up, the mass that we did set it up, and it's showing like a failed signal. So in here, it's counting the number of failures as, as we keep on running the test and so on. Hope you found this demo helpful and informative. Thank you for watching.